Morning peeps, good morning everyone. How's everyone doing? Hopefully you're all doing very, very well. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you guys are new to the channel, don't forget as well to like and share the vids. All right, a couple of things to remind you of. Don't forget, we are live this evening at seven o'clock. Um, we've not done a live for a while, so there's no specific subjects, just we'll talk about everything for about an hour, hour and a half. So if you're free, seven o'clock tonight, we're live. And also don't forget, we are doing a live watch along of uh, George Cambosos versus Devin Haney. I think the ring walk for that fight is scheduled for around 3.30 in the morning. So we'll get going around two o'clock in the morning. Um, so two o'clock in the early hours, Sunday morning, if you're up and you're trying to keep yourself up, join in on the live. Uh, you guys know how it works, it's fun. And then I commentate on the main event. So we won't do um, commentary on all the other stuff. We'll do commentary only on George Gembosos versus Devin Haney. So yeah, that's the two things. All right, let's get into this video. What is there to talk about this Friday morning? This is big. Talking about Devin Haney, Cambosos, Bill Haney, Devin Haney's dad, and his trainer has been granted 11th hour approval for travel visa. He is off to Australia. Um, I like that. I like that at all. Th this is interesting as well. Look at this. Uh, Bob Ware, Haney's cut man detained at Melbourne Airport due to visa application discrepancy. Jeez, man. So this is good now that Bill Haney um, has been granted uh, approval. He will be there. So Devin Haney will have uh, his dad and obviously trainer there, which I think is very, very important. And that could, that could swing it to Devin Haney. Remember I said, look, I think Ken Bosos wins, but it's very, very close because obviously you no know, Bill Haney, uh, no Ben Davison. Now with Bill Haney going out there, I mean, that's the kind of uh, injection that if you're Devin, you need. I mean, imagine what that's going to do to Devin Haney right now, knowing that, okay, my dad, my dad who's trained me from the get-go is flying out. That's big. That's very, very big. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm happy, for, happy for Bill and happy for Devin. Really looking forward to this one, you know. This show is not sponsored by Costa. This was the only coffee shop open and it tastes like piss. Honestly, it's really poor. Um, uh, Adrian Broner confirms comeback fight against Omar Figueroa. That should be a decent little scrap, by the way. It, you know, it's weird. Like, you hear things like, okay, with Broner, it's always stop, start, isn't it? And look, let's be honest, I'm off the Broner bandwagon. I've been off the Broner bandwagon for years, but I just hope from a personal standpoint that he can get himself together and um, and just get back in the ring and make some money. Because every time you see pictures of Adrian Broner, and it's not nice, right? But every time you do see photos or videos, there's always some problem. He's always looking drunk. There's always something about him being arrested, this, that, this, that. I just hope Broner gets on the straight and narrow and gets back in the ring, gets sober. Because every time you see him, he looks drunk, doesn't he? And um, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. I have no expectations for Broner, um, none. But because, of his, because he's still got somewhat of a name value, if he looks good against Omar Figueroa, trust me, Broner's going to be in big fights at 140 or 147 uh, sooner rather than later. It's true. That's going to happen. Uh, Hearn, I got a letter from Mayweather Promotions telling me to stop talking about Javante Davis. Um, yeah, I think he said he got a legal letter saying, look, Javante Davis is still under contract. Um, you, you need to stop talking about him. Um, <clears throat> Javante Davis... Regardless of his contract situation, I don't think... Look, there's a lot of money being offered. Uh, we know about Eddie Hearn and DeZone, but I can't see how Javonte Davis um, signs with Matram and DeZone. I can't see. Like, I don't mind what Eddie's doing. Um, he's obviously stirring the pot and pissing off Ellaby, but I can't see it. Um, Ellaby done an interview, sit down with Brian Custer. Um, I don't know if it was for Showtime or for uh, Brian Custer's YouTube channel. I'm not quite sure what it was. I think... I think it was aired on Showtime. But again, I'm stand, I stand to be corrected. Um, I don't mind when I see sort of managers and promoters going at each other. Sometimes I do find it a bit silly because it means big fights can't happen. But to an extent, I don't mind it. I, I thought Brian, I thought so, uh, Leonard Ellaby's words in that interview were just a bit too strong. Too strong from a high profile boxing figure. Um, it, it bordering on frets. And that's when it gets a bit silly. Like you can like say what you want about Eddie and even his relationship with Frank, which is very, very hostile over here. It doesn't get to that level. 
Like when it gets to that level, I'm shocked that, again, I don't know if it was on Brian Custer's YouTube channel, but I'm shocked that those things are aired out. Like I'm shocked that that's allowed to kind of air, like a producer hasn't looked at it and thought, maybe not do that, maybe not show that bit. I don't know, I just thought it was a bit too much. And even when Eddie said that, when he was in New York for the Katie Taylor Serrano fight, um, someone passed him a phone and it was Leonard Ellaby saying, I know people in New York. What are we doing? Oh, really? It's, it's silly, it's silly. And look, um, I know Eddie pisses a lot of people off um, with his antics, but having been around Eddie for the best part of a year, he's actually very cool. Honestly, he's very, very cool. Um, again, I guess, look, I don't have dealings with him <laughs> that, you know, that that harm my business and, you know, cost me millions. But again, having sat down with him, because I, I admit before, before I met him, and I've met him a few years ago, but before I really met him in terms of actually sitting down, having a conversation just about life, I did think he was a bit up himself, but he's not. He's actually just a very cool guy. So um, all these sort of back and forth of Leonard Ellaby surprised me. Um, especially when, again, when they get beyond the level of sort of just competition, then it's it's a bit silly. Uh, all right, Joe Cordina takes on Kenichi Ogawa for Kenichi Ogawa's IBF Super Featherweight title in Wells um, tomorrow. I won't be there, unfortunately. Um, I had an event booked um, a few months ago. I'm going to go to the Epsom Derby and watch a bit of racing, um, horse racing. Um, so let's have a quick look again at the card. Hopefully my box rec's working. It wasn't working the other day. All right, it's up, bang, good. Um, all right, so main event, Kenichi Ogawa versus Joe Cordina. Farouk Kurbanov versus Zelfa Barrett. Um, Joe Cordina beat Kurbanov, uh, I'm gonna say about 14 months ago. Um, so he, he, I don't, after the comeback from his hand injury, I think he fought Kurbanov, um, then Joshua Hernandez, which I thought was a good performance at Fight Camp, and then he fought Kekatrian uh, recently as well. Um, Interesting performances in both. Um, Cordina, Kurbanov, uh, Joe Cordina won it by a majority decision, so Kurbanov's actually pretty good. So, um, big test for Zelfa Barrett. Don Smith's on the card against uh, Perwin, and then Sky Nicholson, Gabriel, and then after that, it's just almost debutants and guys sort of coming back, long layoffs. Gamal Yafai, for example, takes on Sean Cairns. We haven't seen Gamal Yafai in the ring for about a year. Um, but look, let, let's focus on the main event. Um, Joe Cordina, having watched him up close now for the last for his last two fights, is a very very good boxer, like very good. Um, Tony Bellew was speaking uh, about him, and Tony Bellew said, out of that 2016 Olympians, bear in mind Lawrence Okoli's a world champion, Boatsy on his way there. Uh, Joe, sorry, Tony Bellew thought Joe Cordina was the best out of them all, and that 2016 Olympic pool was pretty good. Um, he had a big setback with his right hand injury that kept him out of the ring for nearly two years. And that's kind of delayed where I think they thought he was going to be already. But nonetheless, this is his 15th fight, only 15th fight and he's taken on a world champion. And he is favorite to become a world champion. Um, I thought he looked really, really good against Joshua Hernandez. Um, I was speaking to Joshua Hernandez's camp before the fight and they were confident. And it kind of, when you speak to a camp and they're confident, it makes you feel like, oh, Okay, well maybe this was, a, this was a tough fight because I thought Cordina would have blown him out and Cordina did blow him out. Um, I, I think the problem going into his next fight against Kekatrian was because he blew out Joshua Hernandez, I think maybe Cordina thought his power was a bit more than it really is and he tried to blow out Kekatrian rather than just box. Um, and in the end, it became a bit of a, I don't know, a difficult fight to watch. It was exciting in, to an extent, but I'm watching it thinking, okay, is Cordina ready for Ogawa after that performance? And the answer for me was no after that performance. But I guess you bag rounds. Um, once you realise you can't get a guy out of there, you maybe sort of take, you know, take a bit off your shots, maybe try and mix it up. And he did that. So in the end, look, it was a good performance. But I remember thinking, mm, not quite sure after that performance if you're ready for Ogawa. Not because Ogawa was this killer, but... Um, but, but I thought maybe there's there's room for one more and then go for a Gawa. But look, if a Gawa gets presented to you and your team, you take it. A Gawa was 34. He's coming off that good win against Azingu Fazili. Um, most people in the States, in Europe, might not give that win too much 
you know, too much, but I thought it was a good performance just because having worked in South Africa, I'm telling you now, a lot of people were super high on Fazili. A lot of people. Like, there's a crop of South Africans that unfortunately we've not really seen because every time they go to world level, they kind of get found out. But Fazili was the one where they thought, okay, he's the guy. Um, so when I saw the matchup, Agal versus Fazili, I was like, oh, this, this is going to be a good one. And in the end, um, Agal was just too relentless for Fazili, just too relentless, too strong. And he's a good boxer. He's 34, which look, you're on the wrong side at 34 trying to make super feather, but he's 34, so, so that could be a thing. Maybe Joe Cordina is the fresher of the two. He is the fresher of the two. He hasn't had any wars at all, um, Cordina, really. Um, Ogawa was out for a couple of years as well with a, a drug infringement. That was um, after the Tevin Farmer performance. I actually thought, having watched that fight back, I thought Tevin Farmer beat Ogawa. Uh, Ogawa got it on points, but I thought Farmer won that. But again, it was close, and that shows where Ogawa is, because Farmer back then was, was considered a very, very good prospect, or a very, very good boxer, not a prospect, a very good boxer. So look, it, it's going to be a good fight. Um, you expect Cordina to win. I do anyway. I think it is going to be a case of Kenichi Ogawa's punch power and his pressure, because he really does literally fight for every minute of every round. And Cordina, A, being able to take a crack, because he's going to get hit, and B, his boxing ability. If he gets into the kind of fight that he got into against Katrian, he's in problems. There's, there's a big problem. If he can just box, and when openings present themselves, take them, then I think he'll win this one. I think he win this one by a couple of rounds, but it isn't going to be easy. It, it really isn't. I think there's a lot of the, the British boxing public that maybe haven't watched Agawa's fights, you know, and maybe, you know, maybe look at the super featherweight division and think, okay, this is the belt for the taking. Agawa ain't a joke, you know. Agawa could cause Cordina problems, but I think Cordina will nick it. And then it's a case of what next for Cordina. Like the problem for Cordina is that he's got a shark in his division. That shark's one of the best fighters in the world right now, and that's Shakur Stevenson. Um, but once you win a world title, you can't go that way. Once you win a world title, you've got to go forward. And going forward means, unfortunately, looking at the people in your division. Yes, there's, other ch there's another champion in division. Is it Gutierrez? One second. Um, sorry, guys. I think it is Gutierrez. It was the regular champion. Now he's been upgraded to um, full champion. That's going to bother me. This is... What is his name? One sec. I should know this. He's got a fight coming up himself. Um, do, 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 do. Hold up, people. And then there's a lot of you screaming. Yeah, Gutierrez. Should have trust myself. Um, so there is Gutierrez, but look, the big fight is Shakur Stevenson. Oscar Valdez is a big fight. Oscar Valdez, if he comes through this, is a big fight. Look, they're, look, they're not going to chuck him in with Shakur Stevenson. I'll tell you that now. Not yet. It's just not going to happen. But those are the type of fights that if you're Cordina, those are the ones that you should be wanting. Um, again, it's funny because when speaking to Belly, I was like, geez, um, he's got a shark in his division. And Belly was like, when he was coming up, he didn't want to have sharks in his division. Some people like that. Some people want the fact that there's a big name in a division. I want that. Belly was like, I didn't want it. I didn't want it at all. And unfortunately for Belly, he said, when he knew he was coming back down to cruiserweight, a certain Alexander Usyk was in the division. And you've got to take the fights. And that could be a case for Joe Cordina. I mean, we'll see, right? We'll see. Um, for Joe Cordina, though, it should be exciting. Joe Cordina, let's not forget, was a champion at lightweight, the British champion and Commonwealth champion. So it's not just super feather. He, he will move up and have big fights. And if you move up and have big fights in the 135-pound division, then, I mean, then there's big fights all over the place. So look, good luck to Cordina. Um, I think he will become a world champion. I think I read somewhere that is, I think he, he might be lucky number 13. I think there's already been 12 Welsh world champions. Uh, two of them will be on the broadcast. Joe Calzaghi will be on the broadcast and Barry Jones will be there as well. Enzo McInerney will be there. Fingers crossed Lee Selby's there. It'll be good to see Lee Selby, who doesn't really sort of come out and do sort of media work. But I do think the zone should maybe get Lee Selby on the broadcast as well. But um, yeah, good luck to Joe Cordina. Uh, I do think he will become world champion, but I don't think it will be easy. All right, what else is there to talk about? Uh, this is a fight that no one really is speaking about at the moment. And that's Stephen Fulton versus Danny Roman. 
How good a fight is that? Honestly, I mean, make sure you've got, you've got your calculators ready because the punch stats in that fight are going to be ridiculous. That's a great fight that no one's talking about. And um, just because there's so much boxing going on right now, but that deserves... That deserves um, its respect because that's a really good one. Eddie Hearn, Robert Garcia is a fantastic addition. I truly believe Joshua will beat Usyk. All right, let, let's talk about this. Let's not talk about Robert Garcia, AJ. We've already done a video. Robert Garcia has flown over to the UK. I'm not a fan of that. I'm not a fan of that at all. I'm sorry, Robert Garcia has his own gym in uh, Oxnard, California. Um, where everyone goes to, everyone. You, you want to be trained by Robert Garcia, get to Robert Garcia's gym. Forget home comforts. Get to Robert Garcia's gym and train. Um, I, I have no idea why Robert Garcia has been flown out to train AJ when he has his own gym, his own setup. Just, <sighs> I'm just not happy with that. I, honestly, I'm not, I, I, I don't get it. I, honestly, I don't get that. It, it's not, not, that's not how it works at all. Um, I remember there was, um, I remember when Dave Coldwell was training Derek Chisora uh, for a fight and then they they, they parted ways um, because I think Chisora couldn't make the trip up to Sheffield to be trained by Dave Coldwell. I think that's where Dave Coldwell set up his, again, correct me if I'm wrong. And so, okay, it ain't going to work because Dave Coldwell's not going to come down to London and train him. You want to be trained by me, come and, come and train where I am. I mean, I'm sorry, but AJ's got to go over to the States and train. You've, he's got to be in um, Robert Garcia's environment. Robert Garcia will perform best when he's in his own environment. Like, he will perform best. So, I, I, not a fan. Not a fan. Look, I'm not trying to say that the fight how the fight now swings back more in favour of Usyk because of that, but I don't like it. I think AJ should travel to America and be trained by Robert Garcia in Robert Garcia's gym. That's what I think, anyway. Uh, Rolando Romero wants to return ASAP. Um, Haney, Garcia, Cambosos, I want to fight them all. Well, he's, he's got his name out there now. And look, he was doing well before the knockout. I know that it doesn't really mean anything because you got knocked out, but he was doing well. There's something about Javante. Yeah? As much as I like Javante, and I'm going to do a video on him because um, he does remind me of Mike Tyson in so many ways, but he gets caught a lot. He gets caught a lot. Don't get me wrong, he will eventually get you, but that's the, the very... Best boxers don't get hit as much as Javante gets hit. And I almost feel like because he knows he's got the power and look, he, we all know his power is ridiculous because he knows he's got the power. Sometimes I feel like he dines out on that too much. He's a very good boxer as well. Like Javante Davis's amateur record, I was about to bring up, but there's no point. is very, very good. He can box. But all of a sudden now, it's just like, oh, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. And <laughs> against a very elite and when I say elite, I do mean Shakur Stevenson. I guess we have to put in the likes of Devin Haney. Cambosos has to go in there as well. Um, maybe even Ryan Garcia, certainly Vasily Lomachenko. You can't just dine out on the fact that I will catch up with you and get you. You can't because you'll be rounds down. I remember against Barrios. When did he stop Barrios? The 11th or the 10th? I remember thinking, Barrios is winning this. And then obviously he got to him. Even against Leo Santa Cruz, I thought he got caught too much. But look, he's winning. And it's all good now because it's spectacular. It looks exciting. The fights are exciting. Um, but I, I, I refrain from calling him an elite fighter because of how much he gets caught. I don't think elite fighters get caught like that, but that's just my own sort of viewpoint on it. Uh, Teofimo Lopez to return August 13th in South Florida at 140. Is there an opponent name? Let's have a quick look. Uh, Pedro Camper. Who is this? I've no idea who this is, by the way. Pedro Camper. So look, Pedro Camper. 33, 1 and 1. This is really shit. That's the last time I'm picking up. 33, 1 and 1, 22 knockouts. Um, hasn't fought anyone. Um, his last fight was a guy that was 5 and 0. Before that, it was 26 and 17. Before that, 11 and 5. Before that, 27 and 9. So, again, no disrespect, but Pedro Camper isn't the guy. But then again, we don't know the frame of mind that Teofimo Lopez is in right now, coming off uh, quite a long layoff, if you think about it, plus a defeat. Um, I saw that I saw that Teofimo Lopez was um, almost calling that Josh Taylor saying, you're the most protective fighter out there. 
you're this, you're that. And I'm like, protected fighter? Look, look I get the, the stick Josh Taylor's getting right now from the boxing community because of that performance and ultimately the result against Jack Catchell, but don't tell me Josh Taylor's protected. Don't you dare. Like, I'm sorry, no. No, Josh Taylor's, and this is why I was upset when Josh Taylor was removed from, I think, a lot of people's top 10 pound for pound. Josh Taylor's fucking legit, man. Legit. It was an off night. Off night. And maybe his words after on social media haven't gone down too well, but Josh Taylor, legit as they come. Um, and I think he's a very, very good boxer. It's weird how one bad performance and all of a sudden people are like, yeah. <laughs> Boxing community is so... Um, so, I don't, I don't want to say fake because that's the wrong word, but it's just so their minds or their opinions on boxers just switch just like that. One bad performance. You think of any other sport discipline, one bad performance doesn't remove you from being world level, world class. One bad performance and all of a sudden uh, he's ducking people, he's this, he's that. I'm sorry. I, I'm, like, I, I kind of remove Josh Taylor's personality and Josh Taylor's boxing ability. Josh Taylor's personality doesn't really sit well with me, although look, it sells fights, so I don't mind it. His boxing ability, apart from that little off night against Jack Catchell, is fucking great. He's great. And for me, he is still the best at 140. Still the best. So look, we'll see what happens um, with Teofimo Lopez. We'll see what happens with Josh Taylor. It's a fight I want to see. We'll just see what happens. Um, what else have we got? Um, anything else here? That's uh, There's little bits and pieces, but what's the time? We got to go. Nine o'clock. Guys, peace and love. Don't forget, 7 p.m. tonight. And then, obviously, we're going to do the live watch along on Sunday morning. Peace and love.